morning. Good to be in God's house this morning. Amen. Amen. <laughs> no matter what we go through, it's always good to know that through it all, Jesus has got us. Him number 507. everyone. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this wonderful, glorious day, Lord, that you've given us to come out and just to worship you. And Father, how we just want to take just a moment, Lord, just to praise you. Father, how we thank you for sending your son to die on an old rugged cross to pay for our sin. Father, how we just lift this service up to you this morning from our song service to the preaching hour. Father, we just pray that your will be done in this service. Father, just clear our mind of the day's activities, the things we have on our mind right now, and just, Lord, just allow us to focus for this next hour on you through our song and through the message. Father, we just lift Brother Jeff up to you this morning. And Lord, we just ask you just to hide him behind the cross. Father, just fill his mind with words of the Holy Spirit that can speak to us and touch us. And Lord, that will guide us through our days. Again, dear God, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful day that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a few announcements this morning and we'll try to get through these as efficiently as we can. Uh, we have some birthdays coming up this next week to Sheila McLeod, to Eric Chavez, to Janetta Precure, and to Bentley Whitaker. So when y'all see them out this week, wish them a happy birthday. Uh, we have a couple of anniversaries coming up to Richard and Carolyn Kaufman and to Ray and Tammy Larris is coming up this week. So y'all see them out, wish them a happy anniversary. Uh, the men's breakfast, guys, be sure to note this, has been moved to this coming Saturday, the 14th. Not the 21st, but the 14th. So be sure and put that on your calendar that we can get that taken care of. Amen? We have some thank you cards this morning. Uh, this is from Brother Herman, the missionary that was here with us here recently. Uh, it says, Dear Pastor and Calvary Baptist Church family, we want to thank you all so much for giving us the opportunity to come and present what God has laid on our hearts. You've been a blessing to us. May God continue to bless you. So that's from our missionary. So y'all be sure and thank him for that. We enjoyed him. Uh, we have a thank you card from Missy. Uh, I just want to thank you all for the prayers. I love each and every one of you, and I miss you all very much. I am so blessed to have such a great family with my church. Amen. Aren't we blessed to have such a great great bunch of people? We care about each other. We pray for each other. And we always try to lift each other up. We have one more. This is from Eddie and Gail. It says, During our time of trials, our church has been such a great blessing. We thank you for all the prayers and for all the support and the love of each and every one of us. Folks, you know, when we're down and out, when we're ill, when we're having a hard time, there's nothing more blessed than just a wonderful person from your church just telling you that you're thinking about them. I'm praying for you. 
You know, that lifts people's spirit up to let them know that we are a caring family right here. You know, we all got a different last name, but we're all a family of God. Amen? We're all going to be in heaven someday with all the other believers. And we're all going to be one great big happy family. Amen? Amen? Let's get together and let's just help Brother Kyle sing this morning. Uh, we're light on numbers, but let's just sing a whole lot louder. Amen? Amen. Hymn number 306. Hymn number 306. After the first verse, we'll get around and shake some hands. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
And that is going to be when we hear that trumpet. Amen. Amen. Can't wait to see our Savior King's face. Let's all turn to hymn number 172. Hymn number 172. Let's all stand. This will be our offertory. <clears throat>
195, number 195. Nothing like the blood of Jesus. You know we're all set free now.
tossing and turning, sleep just won't come. You hate to see the sun rise on another day, and you dread the sorrow that waits for tomorrow. You're out of hope, but thank God for. be in Psalm chapter 40 here in just the second Psalm chapter 40 if you want to turn there. Probably some like myself, you enjoy hearing about those people who have come overcome a great obstacle to get where they are in life. And if we all would have an opportunity to share our story this morning. All of us have, in some part, have had to overcome some obstacles just to get where you are. Life is not easy. Maybe it was a painful divorce. Maybe it was a child. Maybe it was just a work situation, financial situation, whatever it might have been. But whatever that case was, you learned this early on. In order to succeed in life, you are going to have obstacles to have to go through, maybe around, maybe under, but there are always going to be something for us to have to deal with, always. Now, 
Because of that, I wanted to do something just a little bit different this morning, and we're going to have you help. Wednesday night, we kind of give you a, a small coming attraction preview of this, but we wanted to just to get you guys to start focusing on something, and if you don't know the problem, maybe what you're dealing with, mentally or physically or maybe you just there's something that you just can't pinpoint if you don't know the problem then you're not going to know the solution so let me just help you identify some things this morning to help you kind of get where we need to be and we're going to direct you the very best we can through the word of God and my aim and my prayer is before we finish that you guys are going to have something to latch on to you're going to have something permanent that you can hold to and you know that it's going to be real and you know that it's going to be lasting. See, if we accomplish all of that, it's going to be a good day, isn't it? Yeah. And that's our aim. That's what we are here to do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity we have just to open the book. And Lord, I know that maybe there are some in here that's just going to be exposed to it maybe the first time all week. And Lord, if this is their only opportunity to hear the Word of God today, I pray that we will make sure that it's plain. Make sure, Lord, that it's uh, uh, where we can all understand. And Lord, that we can all go in the same direction this morning. But Father, I pray that you take complete control. This, this service would be a total waste of time if you're not in it. Father, me alone cannot do anything. I cannot say anything, cannot think anything without your divine help. Lord, I pray that you'd rain down your blessings upon our folks. Father, pull us together. Let us get to the finish line, Lord, all together this morning. And Lord, I pray that uh, as the Holy Spirit has free opportunity in this place to, to go up and down each heart, I, I pray, God, if there is a decision that needs to be made, Lord, this is the day, this is the moment, this is the time that we'll not put that off. Father, we're going to give you the praise and we're going to give you all glory in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Now, before we carry on, before we get to the text this morning that I want you to see, there are some questions on the screen that I'm going to have to have you answer. Now, if you can answer these, and, and, and they're all going to have to be true questions and true answers, because if you don't answer them truthfully, we can't get the help that you're going to need to see through this message. All right, so the, the, so the, the homework today is that everybody's going to answer these questions truthfully in your mind and heart. Amen. Amen. Everybody. Number one. The last time you felt hurt or disappointment, you, A, you sought advice, somebody that you love, somebody you trusted. Number two, maybe you got under pressure and you just lashed out at others. Or, letter C, you just blamed others for your situation. What did you do? Before you go on, Brother Chris, stay right there. What did you do when you got under a very difficult, hard circumstance of life? One of these three, maybe, maybe, maybe it's not even on the board, but one of these three you might have done. Look at number two. In your current situation, how would you describe it? Now, this is you, not, not anyone else, but not, not, not your home, but this is you individually. How would you describe your current situation? Is it carefree? Is there tension? Or would you describe your situation this morning as preacher? I just have no hope. I don't, I don't see this thing working out. I just don't see where I'm at right now that there is any hope for what I'm dealing with. Number three. How do you see your life currently? Look at this. A. Are you improving? Are you making some small gains? Number two. Stay in the same. Or number three, are you regressing? Do you make those inroads in life and do you seem like for a while that, that, that you do very well and it just seemed like you hit a bump in the road and because you hit that obstacle, you just fall all the way back. You just, you, you, all the progress that you thought you've made and now you're back to square one. And you say, preacher, I don't understand it. Maybe I've been saved for a number of years and I just can't understand why I'm back right where I've started. And I just don't see no real growth. Look at the next one. On most days, how would you describe your moods? I'm glad we're not saying this out loud, okay? Letter A, are you joyful? 
letter B, are you just melancholy? Number letter C, are you depressed? Let me, let me just tell you this. The way you view life is the way life happens to you normally. Wait, 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 wait. Come on. The way you view life is the way life has a way of coming back to you. If everything is rotten, if everything stinks, if everything's everybody else's fault, if, if you can't understand it, you just, this life is just pitiful, and they did this, and da, da, they did this, and I don't know. Well, I can tell you, you probably don't have a very good outlook on life. Are you joyful? I don't have nothing to be joyful for. Everybody's, okay, okay, I get that. But let me just tell you this. You can be joyful this morning as this. Let me give you something that you can be joyful for. All right. Are you ready? Jesus Christ died for you. He was buried for you. He raised again the third day to give you eternal life. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's something to be joyful for. Because let me just tell you this. If, if our life ended today, if, if the Lord decided to come back and claim his church as he said one day he would, Folks, I have nothing to fear because I know I'm going to be in that remnant. I know I'm going to be in that number, not because I am anything, but because I've trusted in his provision. I trusted in what he did for me to give me eternal life. Amen, preacher. Amen. Amen. Well, Chris, is there another one? I think. OK. How would others describe you? Oh, boy. I'm glad we're not saying this out loud. Letter A. Would they describe you as grateful or, 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 or your work associate or, or those people that live with you? Would they say, man, they are just grateful. They wake up every day and they are just grateful that God has put their feet on the ground. Somebody amen that. Listen, I know life is full of pain and I know life is full of hurt and I get all of that. But I can tell you in some of your day. Maybe there's a five minute stretch. Maybe there's a one minute stretch of your day. There is something that you can be grateful for. Amen. Well, you just don't know me. Well, maybe I don't want to know you then if that's the way you look at things. I don't see anything I can be grateful for. Here is a stinking life I live. Okay. Letter B. Would others describe you just always needy? You're just never content. You're just reaching for that next whatever it is because your heart is just always, 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 always on to something else. About the time you get something figured out and about the time you said that thing would make you happy, that thing's not making you happy, so guess what you've done? You've gone on to something else hoping that next thing will make... Is anybody listening to me? You're hoping in that next thing will make you happy and when you get that next thing, guess what? You're still not happy. So that just leads me to believe if that's your case this morning, maybe you're searching in the wrong areas. Maybe you're not right where you need to be. Let, let me just tell you this. I have learned in, in a painful situations and a lot of things and a lot of knockdown drag outs, a lot of mistakes, a lot, a lot, a lot of mistakes that I figured out, figuring this out, that a lot of things that I'm thinking that's going to make me happy on this earth really is not designed for that. And really, the only thing that's going to make me happy to realize this, that Christ Jesus has my future all panned out. He's got my steps planned. He's got my eternity planned. And he's got it right there in the palm of his hands. And, and thank God for this. I'm never out of his care. Just thought I'd throw that in. Letter C. Maybe this is where you feel this morning. Preacher, I can walk into a room and I can just feel like I'm all alone. I don't feel like there's anybody that even knows I'm alive. I just feel like sometimes that I'm just occupying a space. I don't see my purpose in life. I don't see what I'm supposed to do. I've lived 30, 40, 50, 60 years and I still preacher. I just don't understand my purpose. Every day is the same thing. Everything's the same thing. I repeat it over and over and over. And I'm just living one of those life. It's just a drudgery. And it just seems like nothing ever changes. Let me just tell you, there's somebody in here that's living that life just like I explained it. Somebody in this room that feels just exactly what I said. So, now are you ready to get going? Somebody would say amen. You better say amen, else we'll have to repeat all that. Okay. Now, those five questions that we ask you maybe will expose yourself just a little bit. Now, 
If one of those answers that you answered, and all, if, if all of those that you answered was the letter C, let me just tell you, you've got some help. You've got some, you've got some issues that you're going to have to deal with. And I, and I'm glad that you're here this morning because we're going to deal with those this, today, if you'll let me. Let's go to the Bible and let's find out some, some help. Psalm chapter one, Psalm chapter 40, verse number one. Psalm chapter 40 and verse number one. You're going to get some help today and you're going to feel better because you came. Psalm chapter 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me, me, that's you, that's me, and He heard my cry. He brought me, now watch this, He brought me up also out of a, circle those next two word, a horrible pit. Now watch this, He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, set my feet on a rock, and established my goings. Now, Maybe some of you don't feel like you've been in a horrible pit. Let, let, let me give you this before we go on. Are, are you ready? You're looking at me like I'm a piece of meat and you're a hungry lion this morning, all right? So you're scaring me a little bit. If you're not coming out of the pit, you may be fixing to go into one. So if, you are, if, if life is fixing to take you down, you're going to need this message more than you have ever thought. If you're in that pit right that now, you're going to need this message more than you've ever thought. All right. With all of that in mind, lessons learned in the pit is the title of this message. Lessons learned in the pit. What in the world can you learn when you are down and out? Well, boy, I'm glad you asked me that because there are several things that we're going to we're going to look at. All right. The writer of this particular psalm was attributed to David, King David. And many believe that he was written during those years where he was running and hiding from Saul. Notice what kind of mindset that David was in in this psalm. Go, if you will, Psalm chapter 40, verse number 12. Just look at how he was thinking. Look where he was at emotionally and physically. In verse number 12, it says this, For innumerable evils have compassed me about. My iniquities have taken hold upon me so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore, my heart felleth me. You can, you can kind of get when he's writing that verse, he's in a situation that he had no hope. He's in a situation that the Bible declares that he was in a horrible pit. He's listing all of those things. Look at verse number 12 again. All of those evils, he says, they're more than I can even number. Look at this. The iniquities. I am so down. Look what he writes in verse number 12. I'm not able to look up. Have you ever been in a situation that you felt just like that? I'm so down, preacher. I can't even see the, the, the top of this. I'm so down. I don't even know where to go in my next, in my next thought. In, in, in how I am even going to get out of this. If you know anything about David and everything that he'd gone through, his life was on, uh, his life was not on all autopilot. His life was a mess. Now, I want to give you something in Psalm chapter 40, verse number 1. If you're still taking notes, get a pen out and circle this. Psalm chapter 40 and verse number 1, it says this. I waited, look at this next word, patiently. Now, if, 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 if you are in the pit, here's what you know. I don't want to wait. I need to get out. If you are in a big, deep, deep hole and you're in a deep, dark situation and you don't know what, what all's coming at you, you need, you need answers and you need them out. But here's what God understands and here's what He knows about you. Listen to me. Sometimes the greatest blessings are going to come your way when you wait on Him. Now, there's nobody in this room that likes to do that. Nobody in this room thinks that uh, uh, I'm going to be better off if I wait. Because everything that we have in society is a hurry-up society. We're, we, are bi- we are built on speed. We are built on internet. We are built on seeing it, getting over it, and going to the next. We cannot stay in one place too long because we are just, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. That's how society teaches us today. Here's what David was trying to get you and I to learn this morning. If you're down, beloved, here's what you're going to have to understand. You're going to have to, sometimes, you're going to have to wait. 
Sometimes before your answer comes, preacher, you're going to have to wait. Sometimes, dear soul, sitting out in the, in the seats this morning, before you can go on, you're going to have to wait. Listen, author and pastor Chuck Swindoll said this, Brother Chris, I believe it's on the screen. He said this quote, Every problem is an opportunity to prove God's power. Every day we encounter countless golden opportunities, watch this, brilliantly disguised as insurmountable problems. What does that mean? That means there's not one problem that you're going to have this morning that God can't get you out. There's not one deep pit that you're going to fall in that God's not able to get you out. Somebody in this room needs to hear that this morning. So I don't know where your life has taken you. And I don't know where you are presently. But here's what I can do. Is I can brag on Jesus quite a bit this morning. Because here's what I know. The deep dark recesses of my mind. Where I have covered my life up. Where I have digged a bit ditch. And I have crawled in there. And I've stayed in there for weeks and months and years. Here's what I had to finally come to the conclusion. If I don't get some help. This is right where the devil wants me to do be and he's going to cover me up now listen some of you are waiting for the devil just to cover you up let me let me encourage you let everybody watch everybody watch you are too valuable to stay down you are too valuable to stay in that pit God has entrusted and give you more things and opportunities for you to stay down in that dark pit all by yourself, feeling that you're not loved, feeling that nobody cares. I'm here to tell you, there's more people who care about you than you realize. Amen. I figured somebody jump up on the pew on that one, but you didn't, so okay, we'll, 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 we'll move on. I want to give you four essential truths this morning that can shape your life for the next couple of weeks. Four essential truths from these text verses, and we're going to focus here this morning, all right? Four essential truths. We've got to get started somewhere, so we're going to give you number one. Four simple truths. Number one, out of Psalm chapter 40, verse number one, no deliverance except through divine intervention. No deliverance except through divine intervention. Look what the Bible says in Psalm 40, verse one. I waited patiently for the Lord. You know what the David, you know what David understood and what you and I don't get sometimes? You're waiting for something else and someone else to pull you out. You're waiting for your family member to come to your rescue. You're waiting for your coworker or a friend who's just as bad off as you are waiting to come. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, some of you blink right there. You're waiting for a friend who's just as bad off as you are to try to pull you up. And let me, let, let me give you something. The only way up is through the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other way that you're going to get out of your present situation through others. You have got there probably by yourself. You've got in that pit by some of your wicked decisions. You've gotten there by poor choices. And now you're trying to manipulate a way out, out of your pit. You're trying to get people to pull you out. And everybody's looking at you. And here's what God's going to say. I have got my hand extended. And all you have to do, come on, is reach up and grab my hand. Is this making sense to anybody so far? It's amazing over in the book of Isaiah how many times he says, my hand is stretched out still. Matter of fact, in the book of Isaiah, I've, I've underscored all of those in my Bible because I want, to, I, want to, I want to remember that. When I have problems, the Lord says, my hand is outstretched still. When you're covered up, when, when you feel like you have no direction, beloved, can I tell you this? It's not the internet job to pull you out. Now, I know it surprises you. And I know some of you are going to wrinkle your forehead when I tell you this. It's not your preacher's job to pull you out. First and foremost, you've got, you've got somebody stronger and somebody more able than your preacher. And that is Christ Jesus the Lord. If you are there in that dark, deep pit that you have dug for yourself, and many times we dig our own pits and we fall in, you're going to need help. And I, you know what I've learned? Come on, Brother Paul, you know what I've learned? I've learned a lot of times when I've fallen into that pit, I've done it myself. 
I have, I have done it my own self. I've done some things to ruin my health personally. I've done some things to ruin myself mentally. I've done some things not on purpose, but it was just through poor choices. Poor decisions that I've made. And listen, the more times I make poor choices and the more times I make poor decisions, here's what I've learned. I just get lower and I sink lower and lower and lower in that pit. And I started thinking this. Well, why don't somebody come along and pull me out? Why don't somebody recognize where I'm at? And all the while... All the while, the Lord is saying, my hand is there, preacher. All the while, he is staying right there and saying, what more can I do? What more can I do for you? I'm reaching down. Just give me a chance. Is anybody listening to me this morning? No, I know. Our first option usually is not God. Our first option is to do everything but turn to Him. We want to, we want to make sure that we exhaust all our, our human efforts. And I just want, I just want somebody to know this. How much better you would be if instead of extended all of your resources is first and foremost, you thought of God first. Now, I don't know this. I'm just going to throw this out because somebody needs this. I would have ventured to say, that somebody in here might save a little bit of money because you have tried to spend your way out of your problems. You have tried to barter your way out of your troubles. And here's what all of that amounts to. All of that does is make that ditch just a little bit deeper. It just makes it deeper and deeper and deeper. And you just can't understand why you are never, never, never free. You wonder what it would feel like if you wasn't in that pit. Well, number one, it's going to take deliverance through divine intervention. First of all, listen to me. First of all, you need to start with God. Amen. Somebody amen that. That's where all of your problems begin. Listen, if you're an on resort this morning, if you're cantankerous this morning, let me just tell you this. You need to realize that right here is it, it's not my fault. It's not everybody else's fault. Maybe it's just that you're so frustrated, but maybe you need to start right there. First of all, there's no going to be no deliverance out of your pit except for divine intervention. Somebody somewhere, you're going to have to realize you're going to have to go through God first. And by the way, that's a pretty good place to start. That's a pretty good place to start. Now, Pop, can I tell you something this morning? Just between me and you, no one else is listening. Did you realize that sometimes God leaves us in our pit there for a reason? Did you know that? It's because here's what you here's what you do it. You're not going to listen to the preacher. You're not going to listen to your spouse. You're not going to listen to your Sunday school teacher or somebody that loves you, your mom or your dad. So you're making all these poor choices. And sometimes God says, listen, for your own protection, let me leave you there just a little while so you'll learn a lesson. Yeah. Ooh, nobody likes that. When I said that, you should have seen all the faces in this room. You just lips puckered up and you got red in the face. No, you didn't do that. But I'm, I'm just thinking that that's, that, that is a fact of life. That's the reason why it's going to take divine intervention to get you out. The Bible says, and I love this, He heard my cry. Good night. He heard my cry. Let me go on. There is a second truth that I, that, I, that I want you to see. There's a second truth. There is, there is, number two, there is no way out but up. There is no way out but up. Look what he says in Psalm 40, verse number two. He brought me up. Now listen to me. I have watched you and I've watched the numeral people now, follow me, follow me, follow me with this. I've watched you enough that here's what I've learned. When you get down as low as you are sometime, you don't understand that the only way up, the only way out is up. Because here's what you do. You always look for the out this way. You want these, listen, you want these horizontal relationships. You don't want the vertical relationship. 
So here's what you think. As long as I can just maintain this preacher, I'm okay. As long as I can just barely hang on this way, I'm okay. Listen to me. I want to tell you. The only way out of your situation, number two, is divine intervention. And number num, n- number one, number two, is you've got to know that you've got to get up. you got to get up. Somebody amen that. you got to get up. As long as you lay down there, and as long as you lick your wounds, and as long as you blame others, and as long as you look at this situation, well, I don't have it as good as they have it, and it's not fair, and look what they've got. Listen to me. Everybody in this room has got their own pit experiences, believe me. Everybody in here is dealing with something. But can I tell you this? As long as you are in that pit, and as long as you just kind of sitting there and thinking, well, it's just everybody else, and you're licking your wounds, and you're playing the pity party, you're never going to get the help. Is anybody, is anybody with me this morning? There is no way out but up. Somebody somewhere is going to have to learn the lesson that I was taught early on. Son, you better pull your own bootstraps up. You better get up because, listen, you're never going to get anywhere as long as you're down right there. You, if, if, listen, if you stay down there long enough, you're going to accept that way of life. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Red light, red light. You're going to accept that way of life if you stay down there long enough. You know what the devil says? You ain't nobody. You ain't nobody. You'll never rise above that. Don't listen to what that preacher's telling you. He don't know your life. You've had it harder than him. He can't possibly know your situation. Well, that may be true, but the Holy Spirit does. Listen, I'm going to tell you this morning. We just like to sometimes just stay right where we are because watch this, watch this, watch, watch. If we get up and if we get out, that means you've got to start making some new decisions. That means you've got to start doing some things that you're not comfortable with doing. Let me give you one case in point. Somebody needs to start coming to church. Well, I'm not comfortable with that because all of those people at church... Okay, I've heard all that before. So you're telling me that you'd rather run around with a rough crowd thinking that's better than folks in this room. All right, if that's your mindset, I'm not going to buy that, but you do, you go off and play that, play that game a little bit. Let me see where you're going to be. It's time for some of us to get up and start making some new life choices and new thought processes so that you can maintain and stay out of those situations that's plagued you for years. Thank you, preacher, for telling me that. You're, you're welcome. Listen, I'm just telling you, I've learned this and I've watched people. I've watched people at this church. I've watched people in the Mule Shoe community that some people, and I just don't understand it, some people would rather just stay right in their present situation. And here's what I've come to the conclusion. It's a whole lot easier to gripe. Come on. It's a whole lot easier to complain. And it's a whole lot easier to say, oh, woe is me. Ain't nobody's ever had my sorrows. It's a whole lot easier to do that than to get up and start making some decisions that's going to change your life for the better. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's on a tear this morning. No, I'm not on a tear this morning. What I'm doing is I'm going to just try to help somebody here in this room to quit staying down. You're too valuable for that. God's plump, pumped the blood of Jesus Christ into your life. If you're saved here this morning and you're down this morning, there's no sense in that. You Listen, He has paid the ransom price for you. Listen, somebody needs to hear this. Look, everybody look. You're free this morning. You were born to be free. You were born to sail. You were born to fly. Not be where you are this morning. That's a choice you're making. You're telling yourself, I can't do better than this. Yes, you can, because you can get up. You can get up. Well, preacher, it's hard. It hurts when I get up. Yeah, sometimes it hurts when you get up, but you got to get up. Preacher, you don't understand. If I get up, what will other people say about me? Listen, if you start worrying about what other people say about you, you'll never get up. And can I just say something in all kindness? Thank you, Mac. Let me say something in all kindness. They're going to talk about you anyway. They're going to talk about you whether you're in your stinking pit, your horrible pit, or whether you get out. I'm just going to tell you this morning, give them something to talk about. 
Give them something to talk about. They haven't talked about you in a long time. Get up out of your pit. So tomorrow morning when they see you, what in the world happened to that guy? Oh, I bet he found religion. I bet he went to that church thing down there and good night. You know he's not going to, you know that's not going to last. So give them something to talk about tomorrow. The only way out, somebody tell me, is up. As long as you accept the norm, as long as you accept right where you are, you're going to be right where you are. Woo-hoo! You shouldn't give me a whole week to work on this stuff, okay? I'm just telling you. Let, let, let me give you an interesting verse. I, I was going to skip this, but I think somebody in this room needs this. There is a little tiny verse in the book of Jonah. Not, not the fish, but Jonah chapter 1, verse number 3. Look at this. I just I want to prove my point. Jonah chapter 1, verse number 3. Very quickly, preacher, you're running out of time. I know. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now watch this. And went down. Circle those words, went down. He found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare thereof. Look at this. And went down. Beloved, I want to tell you this. The more you go down, the more you're not coming up. Jonah, listen, you know the reason why that fish swallowed Jonah? Yeah, because he didn't know. I want to tell you. It's because he was down and God wanted him up. You yeah. mind listen to that? You see, all, all he would have had to do was obey God. And all he would have had to do is stay up, stay up, stay up. But he went down and down and down and down. Ended up in the pit. Ended up in the caverns of his own soul. God sent the fish to swallow him up because he wanted jo- Jonah up out. But Jonah wanted to stay down. Let me ask you this. What is it going to take to swallow you up before you get out? Mm. All right. Let's just go on. This is just too good. Look at the third truth. Number three. There can be no lasting success without a solid foundation. Look at uh, uh, Psalm 40, verse number two. Put this in, put this as a circle in your Bible. Set my feet upon a rock. Let me share something with you that you need to hear. I'm nearly done, so hang on there, sleepy eye. You know the reason why people get real excited for God? Come on. Get real excited for God, and then three months later, they're right back down. And then the preacher has to kind of, come on, come on, get, come on, come on, get, let's, let's. And then you kind of, you kind of rise up a little bit, and then two months later, you're right back down. Guess what I have to do? Come on, come on. Don't, don't, don't. You know why? It's because you're not going to have lasting success unless you put something solid underneath you. Can I tell you? Some of you are on sinking ground this morning. You know the reason why you never get above here? It's because you don't have nothing solid underneath you. You, you, you just, you just go through life and you get pumped up with a church service, a revival service, a special speaker, and they come in and challenge your heart and you'll say, man, preacher, that guy was good. Boy, that was a good service. And you leave here and you're excited. And then two weeks later, you're, you're dragging the face and you're just sad and you're despondent. Why? It's because you are trying to manipulate your life without something solid. Let me just tell you this. Let me give you, are you ready? Let me give you something. You are never going to rise above your pit level unless you start putting something solid underneath you. Let me just tell you this. You are never, ever, 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 ever going to stay out of your pit unless you let the Word of God get inside your heart. You're going to have to start letting some of this Bible stuff that I'm talking about get inside of you. You're going to have to start letting some of this faithfulness stuff start getting inside of you. You're going to have to start paying attention to the preacher on Sunday mornings so that you can have something stable. Not that that's all in and of itself. You're going to need something your own personal self. Listen to gospel music. Put your feet on the rock. Tell the devil he's not welcome in your life. And and rebuke him and say, listen, I'm not going to listen to your lies. I'm not going to listen to your trash because everything you do is going to cost me something and everything God does for us is free 
Did you hear that? Everything the devil wants you to do cost. Everything God gives you is free. Somebody needs to get a hold of that. Put something solid back in your life. You're not going to, listen, you're not ever going to rise above your pit level unless you start putting something solid in your feet so that when those days come, you're not going to sink down, you're not going to sink down any further. You're going to stay. You're going to at least stay in where you are and then inch by inch, moment by moment, day by day, you're going to rise above. Wow, preacher. You don't make no sense this morning. Okay. And that's fine. That's a fair criticism. But let me, let me just tell you this. Somebody under here needs what I'm talking about this morning. Miss Dennis, there was a song that we used to sing here at churches a long time. I'm not, not so sure I heard it in a, in a very long time. There's a peace in my heart. That the world never gave a peace cannot take away. Though the trials of life may surround like a cloud, I have a peace that has come here to stay, constantly abiding. Jesus is mine, constantly abiding. Rapture divine, he never leaves me lonely. Whispers all so kind, I will never leave thee. Jesus is mine. Some of you need to sink down in that. Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 1, quickly, as I close. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we've heard, like this morning, lest at any time we should let them slip. Underscore that last part of that verse. At any time, we should let them slip. You know the reason why you're in the pit this morning? It's because you've let some essential things in your life slip. You're not near where you need to be. Fourthly, let me give you this and we're done. The fourth truth in Psalm chapter 40 is this. No improvement without a plan of action. No improvement without a plan of action. The Bible says in verse number 2 of Psalm 40, He established my goings. Listen to this. The word established means to get up. And the word goings means to go forward. Taking those words together, it, it would read... To, to get up and go forward. And that's what you and I need to do this morning. Is to get up and to go forward. Now, there are some things that you can do to help yourself. Somebody listed five ways in which Christians fail. Look at the screen. Five ways in which Christians fail. Number one, they have no purpose. Number two, they have no plan. Number, number three, they have no preparation. And number four... They have no push. And number five, they have no persistence. Let me give you a plan of action. These seven things can help you start getting better this morning. Number one, make sure your salvation is real before you leave this place. If you're going to need something to underscore you, to help you, and put your feet on something solid, make sure that you're saved. Make sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior indeed. Number two, look at this. Practice forgiveness. Those wrongs that somebody did against you, forgive it. The only, listen, the only way that you are in that pit is because you're trying to live your life through somebody else. They hurt me, preacher. They did this. I understand that. But listen, in order for you to get through and get out of your pit, somebody in here needs to say, I forgive them. Amen. Number three, cancel anger. I don't know who's in here this morning, but I guarantee you there's somebody in here the Lord just give me. You're an angry person. Everything sets you off. It, you, 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 you can't even sit in a restaurant without being angry. You can't even go anywhere without being upset. Nothing makes you happy. You're just an angry person. Number four, I love this one. How about, how about doing this? Be an encourager. Why don't you write somebody a card this week and encourage somebody? Boy, that would be a lift. Amen. Yeah. Miss, yeah. miss, miss, miss Joe Phelps. 
I wrote Judy and I a funny card this week. We appreciated that. We was teasing her this week, and uh, uh, we teased her pretty hard. And she wrote us a card. And Miss Joe, I appreciate that so very much. That was funny. Number five. Look at this. Why don't you choose to be gracious, not to be wanting all the time? Why don't you just be gracious with what God's given you? Number six. Look at this. Wouldn't this be a, a change in a lifestyle? Be compassionate. Number seven. Oh, I love this one. Rescue others from their pit when you, when it's in your ability to do so. Uh, Brother Chris, I'll just skip that last part. i got a whole other page. I'll skip it. But let me give you this. What is disappointing to the heart of a pastor is to see people in a pit and they don't see a way out. We have given you ways and opportunities for you to climb out this morning. And there's no, there, there, there is no reason why you're going to stay down like you've been down. Because the devil is a liar and he, he wants you to stay down because he don't want you to get help. As long as you are like you are, you're going to be easy pickings for him. Can I tell you something this morning? If you have been in that horrible pit that David described in Psalm chapter 40, can I tell you, the remedy is Jesus. The only hope that you have is a relationship with Christ Jesus the Lord. Would you bow your head and close your eyes with me this morning? Today, Lord Jesus, we have covered a lot of ground. We have seen you in this psalm. We have seen, Lord, maybe in our own lives to where we are stuck where we have digged and digged and digged and digged and we're down at the bottom and we just don't see a way out. The situation in which we're in, maybe it's been months in coming, maybe it's been years in coming, but now you're figuring out, I don't want to stay there no more. I don't have to stay there no more because the devil's a liar and he has trapped me in this place. here in just a few seconds you're going to have an opportunity to climb out you're going to have an opportunity to do why, why the reason why you walked in this room life's too difficult without a savior life's too difficult without a plan of action life doesn't have to be as hard as you're making it to be because here is a solution the solution is for you to get up get out of that pit Start serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Make some correct decisions in your life and start going forward. I wonder if anybody would do that. I wonder if anybody would just take that initiative and start doing that. Preacher, there is a powerful need in my life right now. This next week when you read your Bible, would you just remember my need? Lift up your hands so I'll know that. Any others? Any others? Amen. Any others? Any others? Oh, a lot of hands this morning. Any others? Any others? Let me, let, let's be true. Any others? I want to pray for you this next week. Amen. Any others? I see those. Any others? Father, you saw these many hands. And many of these hands feel like they've been in a pit. They have made some wrong decisions. And they feel like because of their wrong decisions that nobody cares. Maybe they've hurt others that... that maybe they've hurt people they've loved. And maybe they feel like they've given up on them. But Lord Jesus, you have never given up on one human individual. You love us all. You love us in your sins. You love us in our sins. And you also love us as we're saints. Father, your love never changes. You love us. And I pray that somebody get a hold of that this morning. If you are here and you need a better way. If you are here and you need to climb out. I pray that you'd come and let me talk to you this morning. Would you all stand with me? Would you do so? And if you raised your hand this morning, why don't you come and lay your pit problems at the old altar with Christ Jesus the Lord? Maybe you just need to spend some quiet time with Christ. 